Okay, so first impressions video and unboxing for two new sets that could be superstars or not. Um, this first one is the Canera Celeste, I believe is the name. It is using a square planar driver, SPD, 10 millimeter. That's its unique um, angle, and it's also, I believe, about $49. Yeah, $49 on Linsole. I'm going to unbox this real quick. The other one is the T2. DLC. It's got two dynamic drivers like the other T2s, but this one's using an upgraded driver. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look at that. That's $59. I'll give first impressions. Um, you can skip the chapter if you want to go right to that. Skip the unboxing. Open up the box. Take it out. These are falling out. Let me put these to the side. It's got a pouch inside. Inside the pouch you've got um, Decent enough cable. We've also got Celeste foam tips, Celeste silicone tips, and then a cleaning tool inside there that I'll just leave there. And then literature. The graph for this set, I've already graphed it, is right here. Sub base over mid base, it's pretty much a glide style. It's got decent mids, its gain is not too abrupt. It's got a cut around 6k, which is perfect. It's got a it's got a peak around 8 kilohertz. This is uh, I think a foam measurement. Silicone, it's a little bit more. By the time this video goes up, I'll probably have that up as well. The other one I believe has a little more energy at 8k with a silicone tip than it does with a foam. So this has energy at 8k. The tip that you use will emphasize that or it will de-emphasize that. Um, I'll listen to it and see if that's anything that bothers me. It is uh, again very much like the 7 Hertz Zero in its size and also in its build quality and I guess in price too. This is what you get when you pay about $49 as far as build quality goes. But if it sounds really good that'll be dope because it is an affordable set. So I'm going to put this to the side real quick and now I'm going to pull out the T2. T2 has a... Uh, I don't know how many that you can make. And I'm not even going to harp on that because if you do good with it, who really cares? If you go the other way, that's a problem. But let's take a look at this. Open up the box. You're familiar with 10i5. You've seen this before. This is black. The other ones are blue. If I recall correctly, let me take this out for a second. Looks like it's got a cable that's typical to 10 High 5 If you've ever bought a T2 or variants of it, you probably already got this cable. It's got one pair of foam tips and several pairs of silicone tips. Go ahead and put that down. Take a look at the buds themselves. It's got a uh, blue branding on the side. I don't think I saw that before and it's got two pin which is good. Some of the versions of the T2 have MMCX if I recall correctly. Others have two pin. Um, metal build quality is nice. It's nice and sturdy. This is a uh, two dynamic drivers in a, like a coaxial configuration, and I, I'm not sure if one is ten and six, or I'm not really sure. I got to take a look. Um, I don't know if they've updated their specs yet. Now I'm going to go ahead and oh, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. So let's take down that one. We'll go ahead and put up the tin hi fi. The base on this tuning is really, really nice. It comes in, it's got an Elysian type glide, sub bass emphasize, tight mid bass that goes under my target, comes down and corrects itself at the mids. It's got a decent gain in its attack, and then it's got a little bit of extra energy in the upper mids. It's got a cut after 8K, and then it's got energy after that around 15 kilohertz. I've seen another graph that looks a little bit different. Remember, after 8K, everybody tells you don't take it. Uh, it's the gospel. Um, the tuning looks fairly decent. There's been some other T2 variants that were uh, the Evo jumps up, but we'll not talk about that. So that's the unboxing. Those are the two graphs. I'm going to go ahead and sit down and listen real quick and then get back to you and give you my first impressions and give it a ranking. Um, and that's it for this part. Okay, let's start with the Canera Celeste. This is actually a hybrid. It's got a square planar 10 millimeter plus a balanced armature driver. I'm going to give you three tracks. Vivaldi, Elton John, Big Boy Killjill. Let's go ahead and start with, uh, I guess the closest would be Vivaldi, which should be right here. Listening to three 
Concerto number one, two, and three, E major, G minor, and F major. I thought that the strings were not overly intense, like something like the TR and ST5, the graph, and the eight kilohertz peak might indicate otherwise. Also, there's a BA that's probably in the nozzle stem because I don't know how they'd fit it otherwise. However, to be straight up, it's not really that intense, and my ears are not ringing right now when I listen to those three tracks. So, Vivaldi on this set sounds pretty decent. I'm not, I don't have any residual effects of that. I was just listening to back to back to back string sections. So, that's notable. I thought that that sounded fine. Nothing jumped out at me. Again, my ears are not ringing. Next would be Elton John. Elton John has, of course, the piano keys, also his voice. And there's some significant cymbal strikes in this, on this album, which would be Captain Fantastic right here. I thought that this sounded good. It sounded clean. The cymbal strikes sounded a little bit energetic, if I'm going to put it at natural. Um, it's muted on the other side and then slightly extended, maybe a little energetic. I would say that this would be a little energetic. Um, again, not fatiguing. I've listened to all this and I'm now doing the video soon after. and. My ears sound fine. Um, Elton John's vocals sounded good. The piano sounded good. The cymbal strikes had a little bit of extra edge on it. Um, some people prefer that. I'm okay with it. It wasn't offensive and it wasn't extremely unnatural. So there's that. And then the last one that we'll check today will be Big Boy Kill Jill. That's got a triple drop, a dick mat, dick, dick. <laughs> I'll just keep going. A uh, deck mixed hit um, with a bass guitar that follows. Sounded pretty good. If we take a look slowly and look at the graph, the graph is indicating that it's probably going to handle bass guitar decently, and it in fact does. It's not, I, I won't say it's not DD level because I'll just stay away from that completely. It sounds fine. It's Nothing's jumping out at me. I'm ex I was expecting there to be, because of the BA and the stem, preconceived notions are can't help it. Um, this is a pleasant surprise. $49, I believe, is the price. I think it's going to be popular amongst a lot of people. Having said that, there's so much stuff coming out, who knows. But I'm, this is not bothering me in any kind of a way. I will note the significant cymbal strikes with Elton John. Piano sounded lively. His voice did as well. Um, not screeching, not metallic -y, not overly intense in any of these three tracks. thought it sounded good. My initial score would be maybe listed below right now, or not, because I might forget. Um, and that's it right now for the Canera. Pleasantly surprised at its price point. If this had come along like a year ago or two years ago, this would absolutely destroy. It, but in the world of 7 hertz zero, um, it's competing with a lot of killers in the $50 range, but this is... This is legit, and it's going to have its own crowd. Um, full review will be coming for this set. That's the Canera Celeste, I think it's called. Okay, so the Tin Hi-Fi T2 um, DLC, Diamond Light Coating, I guess. So they're upgrading the two drivers that are inside. Yes, there are two drivers inside each one. Starting with uh, Captain Fantastic, Someone Saved My Life Tonight. We've got cymbal strikes that are energetic. We've got Elton John's vocals, and we've got piano. Um, there's a lot of energy. There's a lot of harmonics in the upper mids and into the treble. I think that this set, even though this, the Canera has the BA in the nozzle, the T2 DLC sounds a little bit more energetic, actually, um, with this particular track. This sounds, the cymbal strike is uh pronounced i i take that back the canera actually does the symbol a little bit stronger but the piano and elton john's vocals sound a little more alive on the t2 dlc um it's a cleaner replay than most of the t2s that i've heard recently and there's a lot of them the evo and other stuff the evo was just way over boosted this is a better driver and i think it's probably tuned better i thought it sounded fine on this track nothing jumped out at me uh, again, piano, cymbal strike, Elton John vocals, all mildly intense, but not fatiguing to my ear. I've listened to these two sets in the span of 30 minutes and several tracks. I got no ringing as I do this video right now. Um, the next track would be Vivaldi. Three tracks, the first three. Concerto number one in E major, number two in G minor, number three in F major. Um, a lot of strings, a lot of harmonics, a lot of potential to get fatigued. Between the Canera and the T2 DLC, the set that might become more fatiguing if you listen to 
mm, classical might be the actually the T2 DLC. It's a clean, highly resolving replay, but it sounds obviously energetic across the board in the upper mids. Didn't bother me. I'm okay with it, but if we're going to say which one of the two is maybe more energetic, despite a BA in the nozzle, it sounds like the T2 DLC is, but I think that was the appeal of the original T2, if I'm not mistaken. That was something that was tilted more towards treble heads, kind of like the heart mirror is something that got popular because it bucks the trend of V-shape. This is a set that, um, though it has elevated sub bass and a little bit less mid bass than my target calls for, it sounds quite clean. It's certainly not a bassy set. Um, and Vivaldi sounded good. The strings, I thought it sounded nice. It was very highly resolving. Could be fatiguing for some people, but not because of metallic or an unnatural sound. Just because it's got elevated upper mids. But I, I thought it was fine. Um, and the last track would be Big Boy. It's got a triple drop. One in the sub bass, one around the sub mid crossover, and then one that's clearly in the mid bass. It did that well, lacking a little bit of punch, but that tuning would indicate that. This isn't really a bass head set. If it's anything, it's more of a treble head set, but not really. It's I think it would be appealing to, you could probably maybe EQ this. The bass guitar that comes after this I thought sounded good. Um, nothing jumped out at me. If anything jumped out at me with this set, it would be that it is very clean and clear. And with that comes intensity and with that comes fatigue. But it's not because of a tuning anomaly that makes it sound that way. It's just uh, the way that it's tuned and its tonality overall. So I've got a $49 and a $59 set and they both sound pretty good. And they both sound like they're gonna have their own audiences. I honestly was expecting completely different for what I'm saying to you right now. I thought that a uh, square planar with a BA in the nozzle was going to be a non-starter. That's not the case. I thought uh, the, f the 15th version of T2 was going to be another version of a semi-disaster. Not the case. These both sound uh, pretty good actually. I don't want to overstate it, but I th these are going to have their own audiences. I can see the appeal in both of these sets, clearly. Um, no pun intended or intended. And I'm out. Full reviews will be coming for one or both. Um, probably both. They're legit good sets for their price range. $49, $59. The hobby's getting awesome, especially if you got a tight budget. And that's it for now. I'm out.